So can you hear me? If you can hear me, let me know. If anybody is here with me, please put up your hands. Um, let me know that you are here. Uh, let me give you like two minutes. I will kick off. I just want to be sure that all of us are here before I begin to kick off. So, um, you know the subject matter we are discussing. Uh, you know the subject matter we are discussing, uh, which is um, eSafe. eSafe 20. That is, how do you secure a friendly and protective environment for your children online um, during this e-learning period? Everything has gone online. Everybody is online. And so it is important that we have this conversation. I'm going to divide this conversation into three. Uh, my name is Taiwo Akinlami. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Wendy Ologe, for having me. Thank you, the entire um the intentional parenting academy for having me it's my great great pleasure to be here and um, i believe that um, we are going to have a great time together today um if you are here with me i can see that many many people are joining us please join me uh let's have this conversation together uh it is a parents class in respect of securing a friendly and protective environment for children at this time at this time uh this this time that our children are exposed online and the question i want to i want to start with i'm going to be discussing between three parts the first thing is to discuss the concept of online and offline protection of children whether we are offline or online there's a concept it's an ideology that guide how we protect is to look at how do we uh, develop uh, uh, um, security uh, commitments within the home to ensure that we protect our children. What kind of policy should we Number three, I'm going to look at what are the things... Number three, I'm going to look at um, what are the things we need to do real time so that we can secure a friendly and protective environment for her children. Very, very important. So let me say that at the end of the day, security will continue to be a major issue. Security will continue to be a very, very major, major issue. And let me break it down this way. Whichever way you look at it, our children are not created to protect themselves. And I, you ask me, how did I know? You have never been driving on or on, on a Lagos Express Road and you see a child dropping from the sky. And as the child is dropping from the sky, everybody's running at a scatter to look for scissors to cut the umbilical cord of the child who's just dropping from heaven. Now, the fact that children are born to parents is a signpost to the fact that parents are supposed to take responsibility for their protection. The fact that children are born into a family is a signpost, is an instruction that children are supposed to be protected by the people to whom they are born. Now, note, a family is responsible with the support of the community, of the state, of the international community to protect children. So it is important that we understand that very clearly and we pay clear attention to that and let that guide us, let that instruct us in everything that we do when it comes to protecting our children. It means that we have an onerous responsibility to protect our children. Number two is the father the responsibility to protect children is first of all an active thing it's not a it's not a it's not a passive thing uh it's not a passive thing it's an active thing it's something that you have to be active about 
is a doing thing. It's a doing thing. It's like when the book that I read says, faith without work. Your desire to protect children is the faith. The work is the actions you need to take to protect children. You don't see a car coming for your child and you begin to pray and passively stand there and say, Lord, if it's your will, protect my child. Keep him. Let nothing happen to him. And you see a vehicle coming towards your child. You will take an action. You will run. You will rush. You will take the child out of danger. But you don't, you don't say everything will be fine. I have, I'm serving a living God. Nothing will happen to my child. Let me tell you, friends, this idea of nothing can happen to my child is a fallacy. Look, the language of safety is caution. Many years ago, a philosopher said, vigilance is the price of liberty. Vigilance is the price of liberty. Once you are not vigilant, and vigilant is an active word, is an active thing. You can be, you can be, you can be sleeping and be vigilant. <laughs> if you are sleeping, it means you have put somebody in charge of your vigilance. Maybe the state, maybe the estate vigilante, maybe a gate man. You don't leave your house porous uh, 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 for anything. Now, so. Vigilance is the price of liberty. Is that the first, second thing I want us to understand? Number three, the whole issue of security hmm, is something that has been with us forever from the beginning of the world. The challenge we face on a daily basis, I tell you, is our inability to be conscious of the fact that you don't need to be an evil person for somebody to want to attack you. You don't need to have done, your children don't need to have done something wrong for somebody to want to attack them. They, you don't need to be an evil person. Innocence is not enough to protect anybody from anything. Innocence is not enough. When you wake up in the morning and you are going to work and you are trying to earn a living, now as you are going, you are not planning to destroy anybody. You are not planning to kill anybody. You are not planning to cause trouble for anybody. But there are people who are fringe to cause trouble for you. Now, the fact that you are innocent, the fact that you are not going out to rob, does not mean, you, does not mean the person is not going out to rob, cannot be a victim of robbery. The fact that you didn't wake up in the morning to rob, to, to, plan, some, to plan 419, does not mean you cannot be a victim of 419. So, innocence is not enough to protect you. Huh. What protects you is what we call sortuity. You know, because the enemy from the beginning, even in the garden, if you are a Christian, when the first family was created and they were there, they did not take into cognizance that there was someone waiting on the fringe to take advantage <coughs> of their security. And with the power of sortuity, because the first family did not have a strategic plan to ensure that they protect themselves. I, th I think they thought that maybe because it was God that put them in the garden, everything would be fine. But they forget that God that put them in the garden also gave them dominion. I think the question they should be asking themselves was, what is this dominion about? If we don't need to act, if we don't need to protect ourselves... Why did God give us dominion? Do you give me a gun when there's nothing to protect? Do you give me a key when there's no door to open? Do you, do you, do you, do you give me a mouth when there's no food to eat? Do you give me This is I'm addressing, I'm first addressing the philosophical end so that we can see the reality of what we are talking about. So I'm talking about the principles of safety, the principles of protection offline. And this same principle, if you can understand it offline, you will understand it online. To understand that there are people always waiting to take advantage of you. There are people always waiting for children. 
there are people always wait, waiting on the fringe. Their own job is to take advantage of you. A note. For any crime to happen, there has to be three things. The number one thing that must happen for a crime to happen is that there must be a will to commit a crime. That will must be there. The will to commit a crime must be there. Number two is, apart from the will, number two is that there must be a reward for committing the crime. Number three, there must be possibility of escape. And let me tell you, the possibility of escape is the biggest. Is the reason why people commit crime most. Let me give you an example. Maybe the biggest money <clears throat> is in the central bank. How come armed robbers have not gone to central bank? Maybe the biggest money is in Asso Rock. How come armed robbers have not gone to Asso Rock? Maybe the biggest money is in the is in the state house of your state where you are hearing me from how come am robbers have not gone to the state house note am robbers go to lesser places now one the 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 will to commit the crime is there number two the number two the reward is there but once the possibility of escape is not sure the criminal does not move because the criminal does is not suicidal so the biggest money is in Asso Rock. How come armed robbers have not gone to Asso Rock? The biggest money is in the central bank. How come armed robbers have not gone to central bank? Money is in Lazarus Hotel, five star hotel, seven star hotel. How come armed robbers have not thought about going there? The reason is very simple. They are not sure what they will meet there. Though there's a will to commit crime, though it is lucrative. But the problem is, are we sure we will come out alive? So, when it comes to children, we keep saying children are vulnerable. Children are vulnerable. Children are not vulnerable. What we call child vulnerability is simply adult irresponsibility. Simple. Very, very simple. Because for a crime to happen, there must be security breach. There must be a will to commit a crime. Number one, there must be reward. There must be opportunity of escape. If the people that want to attack our children are not sure of possibility of escape, they won't dare. They will not dare. It's because our security apparatus as a family is a lot of time porous. Because it is porous, then our children get attacked. And when they get attacked, we look for everything to say, apart from the fact that we have not taken responsibility. Look at your jewel. How do you keep them? Jewelries. How do you keep them? Look at your title document of property. Where do you keep them? Look at your things that are important to you. Your car has double, three-level security. Even your Twitter handle. Even your Facebook handle. Even your Instagram account, even your WhatsApp account has three level security. The question is, what kind of security is this for your children? Does he have any security? Second level or third level? Those are fundamental issues we need to look at. To be protected by us, you know, I started by saying children have to be protected by us. If they are to be protected by us and we are sure of that, the question therefore is, what measures have we put in place to ensure that these children are protected? Very, very critical. Look at the, the, what to go through to protect your land document, title document of land, of landed property. Look at what to go through to even protect your WhatsApp group, well, your WhatsApp account. You, you put level one, level two, level three. Look at all that you do to protect all of that. So the question I want to ask you today is that what exactly are you doing what exactly are you doing in tangible form to protect your children from abuse, from physical abuse, from sexual abuse, from emotional abuse, and from neglect? What exactly are you doing? So let me let me ramp up the whole idea of on, offline security now by sharing this with you. Now, it is not every home that will be attacked. 
in life. It is not every person that will be attacked in life, is it? There are people who live their life for 90 years and 100 years. They never experience one armed robbery attack. Nobody gets into their account to steal their money. They are shielded from that one way or the other. But since we know that it's not everybody will be attacked, how come we don't open in the night? We just open it because armed robbers are not going to attack everybody. Let me share my password. Put it on Facebook. This is the password to my to my to my bank account to my bank online online banking. This is my this is my password. I just throw it everywhere. I just do a big board. I say, look at my password here. You can have it if you dare. You don't do that, though you know. Crime criminals cannot. It's not everybody that criminals will. Attack. But you still make a sure because you don't want to be the one that the criminal will attack. Because you don't want to be the one that the criminal will attack, you make adequate preparation to ensure that you are not the one. So because if you are not going to be the one, you have to take steps. You see, I've been attacked by armed robbers before. And you see, the way armed robbers work <laughs> is very they did not come to the community to attack anybody in particular they don't have any information they just look for places where there's a loophole maybe you forget to lock your gates you forget to lock your door they just push it once they push it the thing is open they come in there are people who come who are heavily armed those ones they have information maybe the person has spoken carelessly somewhere Maybe there is, uh, there's an information from somebody who is living with you, who has gone to give you away. Maybe those ones are there. I, I, so, so you are forced to, you, you, so you receive those ones. And those ones are rare. Because for them to carry out that kind of operation, they need a lot of preparation. Those kind of senior armed robbers don't move, don't move except information. And it's not every, every day somebody will betray you. But the ones that are very, very powerful that move most are the opportunistic robbers they just go around and those opportunities they are not less harmful less leader less corrosive than the the uh, uh, purposeful robbers those ones they have killed the opportunistic robbers have killed more people than the than the than the superstar arm robbers that is how. Now, the question is, the people who want to abuse our children, most of the time, they are opportunistic. They take advantage of our loophole. So let me quickly give you an example. Before I move to, because I want you to understand this concept of offline protection. Because let me tell you something. Until you understand the concept of offline protection, which is the foundation, you cannot understand the concept of offline protection. It's not possible. Sorry. Until you understand the concept of online protection, you cannot understand the concept... Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm missing it up now. Until you understand the concept of offline protection, you cannot understand the concept of online protection. Yes, I think I got it now. I got it now. A lot of mathematics is going on in my head. Sorry about that. So you see, because it was the offline first before the online. It was in the la it was the life offline that translated that has now moved to online. I hope you get what I'm saying. So let me say the final thing to you about this offline protection. Security and the protection of our children we forever be a concern. A concern. You don't do security finish. We protected them finish. We've been doing it since. I've been doing this all these days. I've been locking my doors these days. Today I'm not going to lock it. Um, uh, anything that happened. Uh, I've been I've been putting password. I've been protecting my passwords all these days. I'm tired of protecting my password. Let me leave it. Anything that can happen, let it happen. Uh, it doesn't matter. 
And I've been ah, so these years I've been I've been I've been telling my children about to, how to walk on the road to uh, 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 not to be victim of traffic. And now I've done enough. Yeah, children, anything you do, like anything you like, do no. The concern for the protection of our children is a lifetime concern. Because as long as they live, enemies will not rest. Those who want to mess up our children will not rest. So having said that, let me go quickly to the idea of online protection. Note, can you imagine taking your child to Wall Street in New York? Your child is just there alone. Can you imagine taking your child to Broad Street in Lagos? Broad Street. Your child is just there and is there alone. Can you imagine taking your child to, um, to a street, to a shopping mall, a big shopping mall, and the child is there alone? Huh. The World Wide Web is bigger than the Wall Street. The World Wide Web, and that's what you call Dark Web. That one is there. Huh. The world wide, do you know how many documents upon documents, how many sites upon sites that are available online? And once you have data and you can browse, you have access to all of these places. The ones you pay for are not as many as the ones you don't pay for. Now, now predators are offline, predators are also online. So what do you do when you take your child to a shopping mall? Do you leave him to be walking around and be making his own shopping and be buying his everything he wants to buy? He said, Mommy, I'm going around. This is your seven-year-old. This is your eight-year-old. This is your nine-year-old. Even your 15 year old 16 year old Do you take them to even church, to the church, or even to the mosque? And on Sunday, just leave them. So anything you do, just, just be having your way. One day I sat in church and a lady was going to tell the child and say, the child would be like nine years old. Go across the road. Take this ATM card. Go and collect money from ATM. And I heard what she was saying. You know, when it comes to protecting children, I don't mind my business. I don't mind my business. So I whispered to her and said, Ma, in this church, 10,000 congregation church, send your child Nine year old, ten year old to go across the road to go and collect money from ATM. Let me analyze to you. I was telling her the danger involved. Do you know if there's a kidnapper waiting in the fringe? You think we are in church? And kidnappers don't come to church? I come to church. Number two, what if as he's going to, to collect the money? Your own justification is that now you want to give to God. God will protect the child. God works. Now, number three. What if as he's trying to collect the money, robbers take advantage of his childhood? Or the father is a child. These robbers, they attack adults. Somebody that I know was killed on Sunday by ATM machine. By ATM machine, I'm robbers killed him. I said, so why he was there? What if I'm robbers attack this child now? I said, man, this decision, I don't think it is wise. Service was going on, and I was having that conversation. She left the child there. She, she wanted to stand up. She said, I'll go and take him. I said, said ma, don't go. Do you know me? Because I've spoken like this now. Do you think, you don't believe that I'm, to, I'm protected? What if all of this is that I'm saying is to get you to a so that I can kidnap your children? Don't go, ma. There is, you can pay tight and offering. You can pay through card. Why, why are you not thinking security? Why are you not thinking? Why are you thinking that? I say, so don't take my word for it. I may be a master predator who want to use this thing that I've said now to get you comfortable. The ploy might be, I want you to be comfortable to leave your child with me so that once... I say, so madam, don't do that. It's not wise. She was looking at me like this. I said, well, it's the money that I have that I'm borrowing you now. Now, this is the point. When you take your children to places, you don't leave them alone. The same way, when your children is, are online, it is wise to leave them alone. So what do you start with? You need to start with parental apps. 
There are apps you can install on the system being used by your children. And these apps will help you see everywhere your child is going. <laughs> everywhere your child goes online. Apart from the fact that you have created security online, the places they can go, the places they cannot go, but there are different apps now. There are premium solutions when it comes to apps. There are free solutions. The premium solutions provide ultimate security for our children so that we can see everywhere they go, everybody they are chatting with online, we can see. It is important that we understand that. Let me tell you, somebody, a parent called me yesterday. We are resuming work on Monday now. They said we can go out. How do I secure the safety of my 13-year-old? He's going to be at home. He's going to be with his five-year-old. What are we going to? What am I going to do? I said very simple. Do you have parental control app? He said, which one is that one? I said, madam. He's a man. I said, sir, at your level, you are still asking me that question. I said, well. <laughs> You need to go and Google it. Oh. Google is your friend. That's number one. I'm speaking from, I'm telling you about the technical part. Number two, this is a conversation we need to have with our children. We need to help them understand how online works. We need to let them understand what is called online footprints. We need to let them understand that it's not the same way people pretend to be who they are not offline. That is how they pretend, they pretend to be who they are not online. We need to let them know that a 50-year-old man, a 40-year, a 30-year-old man can Photoshop the picture of a of a 40. Begin a conversation with our children. We need to have that conversation. We need to work, and that is why we, as parents, we need to have that information. We need to have that information of how, what conversations to have with our children. Now. We also need to understand that in all of this, what parents are doing is what is called catfishing. What is catfishing? You go and follow your child with a pseudonym. A pseudonym. So that you can be seeing what the child is doing online. And I say to parents that, well, if you do that, you are catfishing. It means you have lost your child. That you have to go there to go and be checking. Why behind your child? That your child is not confident enough to do something and come tell you what I'm doing. So you catfish, you follow the children. When you follow the children, you think you have everything under control. I know what he's doing. Let me tell you, children are wiser than we give them credit for account pseudo account because we're asking him too many questions now that he's beginning to think that or asking him aha so many questions now that he or she is beginning to think that where does mommy get this thing from next is postings he sees that hey, this is where daddy is getting this thing from okay no problem i also will go and open a pseudo account they won't know who owns it me self, I will be doing my own there and nobody will know. You see, catfishing is not the way forward. We need to have conversation with our children. And what kind of conversation do we need to have with them? Inculcating the right value system into them is called positive value system. Value system. And how does it work? It is to show our children how this world works. From our vantage position as parents, we show our children how this world works. We show our children the transient nature of this life. The fact that their children today, in, they're in a phase of life, but in a state of development. We let them understand that whatever they do have consequences. 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 That because they are young does not immune them against the consequences of their actions. Daddy, daddy's action has consequences. 
seen and unseen, short term and long term. Daddy's decisions have consequences. Mommy's decisions have consequences. Nation's decision. Let them understand that being they are immune against the consequences of their action. Don't motivate them through fear. Motivate them through understanding how this life works. Let them understand that they don't need to be evil for somebody to want to attack them. They don't need an uncle who comes visiting. Who says I'm here to visit? Don't see him as an uncle alone. There's a saying, never trust an old friend. That Mr. Adakulation will say, Who is a stranger? A stranger is somebody you cannot vouch for, including blood relatives. Blood relatives, they are strangers. So once you cannot vouch for them, you don't know the value system they represent. Let your children, don't get your children paranoid, but get them to understand how this life works. If they can understand how this life works, they will understand that it's not everybody who is smiling at them that want the best for them. So when they understand how this life works, when, they, when you're able to help them understand values, uh, positive value system, when you inculcate that into them by themselves, they will judge their own actions offline and online. They will judge their own actions. By themselves, they will report to you things that they believe are not in their own best interest. Let me tell you, let me tell you, friends, that somebody is 13 years old and she has started seeing her menstrual cycle. It's 13, a girl, 13. And somebody is 30 years old. You know, that 30 year old person is married is qualified to expect a child. The 13 year old is not married. He has his future, she has her future ahead of her. Her future, the course she wants to read, she wants to be the first doctor in her family or in her community. She wants to do many things. She's the only daughter of her, of her mother and her father. And the mother has part menopause, can't give birth again. The father is old. They gave birth to him or her, they gave is a child of promise. This child is a child of promise. Good to go. The family is investing heavily in her. And you see, so this 13 year old has started in a menstrual cycle. Now, if this 13 year old gets involved in sexual, in sexual activities, Either by way of somebody she calls boyfriend or girlfriend, or he calls girl, boyfriend. The seven year, the 30 year pregnant. If the 30 year old engage in sexual intercourse, she too will get pregnant. She may get pregnant. This is the point. Now, biology does not know that you are the only daughter of your parents. Oh my God. Biology does not know that you are the one who is going to be the first doctor in your family. Biology does not know that your mother has passed menopause. Biology does not know that your father is old. Biology responds to your action. Once there is intercourse, man and woman, the possibility of pregnancy is there. So this 30 year old now is not immune against the consequences of sexual intercourse because of the future that is ahead of her. The only thing that can protect her from pregnancy is the, is the understand is the fact that we have protected her from being abused. Is the fact that we have let her understand that as a child, she's not ready for sex. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not ready for sex. It's good to go. Once you do the things, once you eat, we go to the toilet. Once you drink water, you will you will go to the toilet. Work, we sleep. Biology does not understand. The way forward is for our children to know that life has consequences. Consequences. Consequences.
consequences. Life has consequences. Doesn't know what you want to do, what you don't want to do. It is consequences. So, if our children understand, they go. Said, you know, I've told you about parenting. Very, very under. Very, and I'm telling you about the value system. Your children are not goats. They are reasoning beings. So all this idea of always, always, what are you looking at? What are you checking? What are you checking? It's work. Also, we need to respect the to respect what, the privacy of our children. Because when you don't respect their they don't respect the privacy of other people too. Respect the privacy of other people. So when you bring that in that is how to handle life, to be suspicious of everything and of everybody, it does not work that way. So, ladies and gentlemen, the number one thing we need to do is to inculcate the right value system on our children. Now, this is the point: our children will be completely safe online. There's no hundred percent safety offline. Hundred percent safety offline. Sorry. There's no 100% safety offline. There can be 100% safety. I, I, are you getting? It? So what we are trying to do is not to seek. It's not to say nothing must happen. It is that even if something happen, our children have enough resilience to deal with it. They have report to us. Now, Josh McDowell work sorry Josh McDowell sorry as I was saying has done extensive work on children and pornography you can you can cite him out Josh McDowell says hmm, it's not whether in this age and time with the influx of internet multiple channels and all of that it is not whether our children it is that what when they see is of the opinion that they will see it. Now, this is, a, this is an adult platform. So, pornography now is in two ways. There is hardcore pornography, explicit, downright explicit. There's no soft cop. They are suggestive. Both of them have the same. Image. What is pornography? Pornography is anything that arouses the sensual sensibilities of a person, a child, or anybody unnecessarily. That is pornography. Arousing sensual sensibilities. Unnecessarily, unto lost, unto lost. That is pornography. So it's not about whether our children are going to see pornography. It is that they will see it. Now there is a gentleman who is in the forefront of messing up our children. He didn't set out to mess up children. That's not his mission. The reason why he has unusual access to our children is because. We have not recognized these people for who they are. They didn't set out to kill anybody. They didn't set out to be, to be, to, to. But we as parents or people who take care of children, we have not understood that the world is looking for the mind of our children. And those who have their minds have their lives. Those who have their minds have their lives. Your children online for school. They are online for school. Those who mess up their mind also now know that children are online. And they are unusually online more than they were before. So the same way all of us have gone online now, predators too have intensified their efforts online. You think it's only those who want to do good that, are online, that have gone online now. Your efforts 
want to abuse children also and intensify their own efforts online. That is it. We need to understand that. Those who have the mind in their lives are coming to your home. Now let me analyze it for you. This e-learning. This I analyze it. If you are at home and somebody knocks on your door, you don't send your child to go get the door and ask to get the door. No. If your child is going to get the door, maybe you are standing, you are, you are awake, you are aware. And you have given your child strict instruction. If anybody knocks on this door, please let me know before you open. Come tell me. Don't open the door. Now, so, when people come to your home, now, when school was offline, in the morning, you take your children to the, off, to the offline school. Once you drop your children there, your children are under the care of those offline people. Whatever happens to the child at that time is their responsibility. Now, when you, your children come back home, they are under your care. Whatever happens to your child, your care, you are responsible for that. Now, when you homeschool your children, your children are completely under your care. Right? Now, this is what has happened. There's an, there's an hybrid now. Education is taking place online in your home. Now, what has happened is that the school you used to drop your children for, when you go, where you drop your children for, they are now children you used to to drop. they are now coming to your home door online your home what kind of preparations are you supposed to make in receiving them note that they are now coming into your home without in their secrecies their belief system and all of that take zoom for example when your children if your children use use um microsoft team they use um they use all kinds of things now now but let me take zoom as an example when i'm on zoom meeting i private chat some people i private chat some people by the side now somebody who and is relating with your children is relating with 40 children 30 children 20 children he, he or she can be private chat chatting a child by the side Communicating to the child what is not part of his duty to do. Now, we don't know what schools are put in place to ensure that children are protected at that level. It is our responsibility to have conversations with our school, with our ch school children and say, excuse me, what have you put in place? We on our own, as if we come to our homes, what have we put in place to protect our home from any form of attack from them? Very, very, very important. Now, so, ultimately, what do we need to do? Ultimately, what we need to do is to now have guidance. Is to now have guidance. Remember, I spoke about parental app, parental control app. I spoke about having conversations with our children. I spoke about the guidelines that need to guide your children. As this one day, you are going to receive three teachers, four teachers. Now, instruction with that relationship, we empower our children. To be able to, what guidelines do we put in place? So, I will suggest five things that must be on that guideline. Quickly, as I begin to round up, I'll suggest five, five, five things that must be on that guideline. Your clear to protect your children. That you have a clear intention to protect your children. You must let them know. And you must let them understand that they have a responsibility in their own Important. Two, 
You must let them know their boundaries online. Please, the reason why you are going online is to study. Focus on the reason why you are there. You know, if there are other things you want to see, as a matter of fact, kicking other things is a distraction to you. So, please focus on the reason why you are there. That's number two. We need to let children understand that they, they should, because, again, there's a lot of distraction. Now, people are now doing courses which is called distraction management because people now, you know, are dealing with a lot of distraction. If adults are dealing with distraction, how much more young, old, young people? Number three, we must tell our children, be careful who you follow online. Don't follow a stranger. And if anybody is saying anything to you that he or she is not supposed to discuss with you, please let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Now, number four, we must let them understand this law of, we must put in the, in the guideline, this law of consequence. Do this if you do this. Mommy would and you know that you are going to be serious about what you say you are going to do. To do your give me the opportunity to trust you. And my trust. Once you don't earn my trust, so breathe on your neck. Breathing on your neck will be the consequence of you missing or the belief we have, we have, we have, um, we have, um, we have uh, trusted in you. That daddy and mommy are watching. You see, don't, don't do this thing. I'm watching. They are not aware. So I want to catch them on aware. No, let them know. If you have a parental control, I need you to know that daddy and mommy are watching. I'm not saying. That is the reason in the, in the, in the, I'm watching you. Not to come. Because it's a tool. You know, because the impression parent, even some parents, the reason why they put it there is to the child. And so that they can hold the child. But when you did let the child understand, I'm not watching you for me. I'm watching you for you. It is in your best interest. The Yoruba is an adage. Only Yaloma Jele it is the person who is going through it more. Person who is going through something that feels it more. So you let the child understand about the fact that eh, I'm trying to watch you so that because I'm paranoid. No, I'm not watching you. Mommy and daddy are watching because they love you too much for you to harm yourself. So that's why we are watching you. What a conversation. What a conversation. I think that we have, we have learned something today. Questions, you can just shoot them. Uh, uh, system in children. Kinds of materials. You can get all those materials online. They are on Okada book. They are on um, Okada book. You can get those books there. We have five volumes. We have four volumes of books that help you to broach conversation with your children. They are there. You can pick them up. You know, when you go to Okada, just like me, we have comic eight editions that. Um, so, so you you can you 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 can take this conversation further at that level. You can follow. You can look for our social media platform. I also follow us. Now, please note. Is a conversation that we must continue to have. But you see, my perspective to all of these things are different. I believe that the foundation of everything, the reason why myself and Mrs. Wendy Oloke Gel, Oloke Gel, the first time we met, we've been, we've, been, we've been talking before we met. And the day we met, it was as if we've known forever. That our perspective about things are also value based. Children do what you do. 
our children are our, our children are either beneficial example or they are victims ultimately research has now shown that children watch what to watch children see what to see so all of these things that I've spoken about let me wrap it up this way the children are watching you you can't be watching porn and be telling your children don't watch porn you can't be in discipline online you are telling your children to be disciplined in discipline is a Whatever you don't like your children right now, put responsible online. And you want your children to be responsible online. Ultimate. That is the ultimate thing I need you to know. So it's not about loading rules for children. It's about exemplifying those rules, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what I would like to say to you. Having me, it's my pleasure to be with you in the last one hour or so. Sorry, my network has been bad. It's, it's acting up. So, it, it, so let's keep the conversation going. We are going to be having a session for parents, school owners, school owners later. We will announce it. I will, I will keep you posted through Mrs. Ologe. We want to have a session for school. I think parents a more elaborate session uh, because it's going to be addressed. So, please be on the lookout for that session thank you very much for having me please pick up our materials as i've said they are online they are on okada they are on um, um amazon you can just so Loge, you are doing a great job thank you for having me it's been my pleasure being with you if you have any question uh let me know uh, i think we should have the boss i i think we should the broadcast